Uh, thank you, Madam uh, President. It's my pleasure to stand before the chamber to speak positive comments on uh, Senate Amendment B, as described by the co-chair of the Appropriations Committee and co-chair of the Finance Committee. Many, many, many hours, I think, from both sides of the aisle went into developing a budget, as well as the countless hours of staff and our nonpartisan offices to produce the work that we have before us today. Uh, but it's all about choices, Madam President. And folks keep asking, why is it taking us so long to pass a budget for the state of Connecticut? And in fact, I think somebody's keeping a, a calendar count on how many days we've gone uh, without a state budget. But when you, you're out in your communities and you're out talking to folks, life continues. But what they're afraid of is the future. And that's what budgeting is all about. It's setting priorities. It's making sure that folks can rely on predictability and reliability. And unfortunately, those have been absent from the last few budgets that have been adopted in previous biennium cycles. And I'm not even counting the five or six budgets that were done during the last year. Because we've heard things like, well, the revenue estimates didn't meet the expectations that we thought would happen when we passed that increase. I get it. But at some point, people can't rely on the facts that we're delivering to them. We shouldn't be relying on those facts to some degree because they don't meet their expectations. So every single time you try to build something off of a projection, when you're increasing something and it doesn't meet there, you're going to be in the same shoes. So I think the, the Republicans took a different measure uh, this time, Madam President. And as outlined by my colleagues, uh, we're proposing a budget with no tax increase. And we find efficiencies within state government. We, we reduce the size of state government. And I, I applaud Governor Malloy uh, when he speaks of the size of state government, that he's been able to reduce it uh, during his tenure and your tenure in office, Madam President. But we'll take that another step further. And we'll actually reduce the size of the legislative branch of government. We, we believe that's the right thing to do. How can we set an example and lead, be leaders in the state of Connecticut if we are afraid to reduce our own branch of government. So we do that in our budget. When the speaker revealed his budget at a press conference a couple days ago, my inbox was inundated with emails from first Sletman, mayors, town council members, all very upset at the proposed budget that was going to be debated before the General Assembly. They were most concerned initially about the cost of the teacher's pension being shifted to the municipalities. And while I can appreciate the fact that the other side of the aisle came back and said, well, we won't pay the outstanding obligations. Under Senate Amendment A, we're just going to pay the current costs of the teacher pension plans. Under the guise that the state has no control over the benefits offered to the teachers or the salaries offered to the teachers because that's done at the local level. But this system has been in place for decades. And it's due to our own fault, our own inability to plan and budget for the cost of the teacher pension plan that got us into the situation. So we don't shift that responsibility onto the towns. And the towns have said, if you're going to make us do something, give us a seat at the table. Well, doesn't that sound like a common themed argument in this building, especially when it comes around budget time? Give us a seat at the table. While Republicans negotiated with Democrats over the course of the summer, it got down to the point where there were separate conversations. And I knew we, we talked about dual tracks that we would negotiate with the governor's office as well as negotiating with our own party and as well as negotiating with the Republicans. But at the end of the day, we're all in this together, folks, because every single one of us will have to cast a vote, a yay or a nay, and every single one of our constituents will have to deal with the fact with whatever we pass. 
Last night, when Senate Amendment A was delivered to us, we heard the highlights. Usually I don't post anything politically on my personal Facebook page, but I highlighted some of the things that would be voted on today in the Democrat proposed budget because I was beside myself of the things that we were going to ask folks to additionally pay for. Haven't they paid enough? And I will share with you, I got over, I don't know how many likes on my page, but several comments. Folks saying, enough is enough. Not one positive comment. And I'll share with you if I got a positive comment. We spoke about the, the vacation homes. We spoke about the rideshare tax. We spoke about the wireless cell phone tax. We spoke about the cost of the teacher's pension plan shift to the municipalities. And the average citizen just doesn't get it. Or they get it, I should say. Maybe the legislature just doesn't get it, that people feel that they've been taxed enough. And folks will say, well, to the Republicans, if you're not going to raise taxes, how do you meet a balanced budget? How do you do it? I like to see the runs for the municipalities. I like to see how you're going to fund education. I say, it's right here in black and white. Just pick it up and take a look at it. You'll see how your towns fare. Your boards of education will see how they fare. And yes, some communities will see cuts over the duration of time. But they have enough time built into our plan to prepare for it. And that's all they've ever asked for. Give us the ability to prepare for it. Because we know that we have to be part of the equation as municipal leaders. We understand that. But don't give us something, a mandate, after we've already adopted our budgets, after we've already sent out our tax bills. And that's not every community in the state of Connecticut. Because there's some communities that are still waiting for the legislature to pass a budget before they adopt something at the town level. That was on the headline news last night. Some towns are talking about going insolvent if we don't pass a budget soon. Hartford's claiming they're on the brink of bankruptcy if they run out of cash in two months' time if we don't have a budget passed. So people are depending on us to do our job and to do it right and do well by them. And Madam President, I'll say to you that I believe there's only one budget that's going to be presented to us today that does that for our municipalities and for the citizens of the state of Connecticut. And that's the budget, uh, Senate Amendment B, that we're talking about right now. I think it's important because we provide additional dollars for education for our towns. We always talked about special education costs. If you talk to a superintendent of schools, they'll tell you that the biggest issue they have is special education because you can never determine how much you're going to be spending that year because if a family moves in and they have a special needs child, it could blow the budget, their budget out of the water. This budget addresses special education at dollar number one based on the previous year's expenses something that the towns have never received before. This is a budget that we believe under educational cost sharing addresses the lawsuits which got us into this situation, Horton versus Meskel, and the CJEF uh, um, lawsuit that uh, is on current appeal by the Attorney General's office. We address those things. We, su we supply and maintain our municipal aid to our, our communities. We talk about infrastructure and how we need to rebuild our roads and our bridges. Well, our towns are under the same auspices. They, they, they have the same mandates by their towns. We don't get, I don't get a phone call or an email about a pothole in my road. But guess what? My first letman does. My mayors do. They hear about it. And they haven't received their town aid road yet assistance. That comes from us. We maintain town aid road in our budget. So our towns can do the type of infrastructure needs that they do for enhance the transportation needs. In fact, as part of our transportation strategy, it's fully funded in this budget. We're able to do the long-term projects that we talk about year after year after year. Well, the time for talk is over and the time for action is now. All you need to do is push that green button. When you go back to your, your communities this evening and people ask you, how did you vote on the budget? You should be proud to say, I voted for a budget that doesn't raise taxes. I voted for a budget that pays for transportation, pays for infrastructure, maintains predictability and reliability for our municipalities, 
increases education dollars, that's the budget that we're going to be voting on in a few minutes. And I'd ask each and every one of you to think long and hard when you cast your vote on this budget. We also have very few, very many senators who have state parks in their district. In fact, on a bipartisan basis, we created a tourism fund, if you will. And this provides a mechanism for those monies to go in to be able to maintain the parks and the great tourism, because we live in a great state. As we witness disasters all across our country, from mudslides to hurricanes to tornadoes to earthquakes, well, in Connecticut, we may get a nor'easter, but guess what? Our DPW crews do a hell of a job, and the roads are cleared up in 24 hours, and we go about our business and our daily lives. If that's the most we have to worry about, a snowstorm, we got it all here in Connecticut, Madam President. And I, and I, and I, I applaud the governor with his still revolutionary, because this is a great state to fight for. We've got the mountains, we've got the ski slopes, we've got the ocean, and we've got the beaches, and everything in between in the state parks and the camping. We have uh, historic villages. We have a beautiful science museum, which if you haven't had a chance to go see, uh, the technology and the future that's shown in that case, showcase, is amazing. These are things that we can all be proud of. These are things that our budget supports. I dare you to go and find something in our budget that's that smells, because there's nothing in there. Find something in here that says, this isn't good. We talk about structural changes. We address those structural changes in our budget, because we know if we don't put structural changes in place now for the future, it's a never-ending cycle. And you know what happens when we see never-ending cycles? Everybody calls it a Groundhog Day moment. I'm getting tired of seeing Groundhog Day moments in the state of Connecticut. It's time to move our state forward, Madam President. This is but the first step of a long journey, but it's a step that is necessary to move us in that direction. And I ask each and every one of you to please support Senate Amendment B with a yes vote. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Will you remark for the Senate?